Hi guys, welcome again to Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Aldecasco. So again, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. And at the same time, make sure you have your notepads ready and pen ready to write, getting some good gold nuggets. So again, let's welcome Sifu Al, who will actually introduce Chad Owens to you guys. So again, Welcome, Sifu Al, for your podcast. Hey, here we go again. I know we had, last week we had a really great time doing the podcast with uh, Harry Muck, and now we've got a superstar with us, Chad Owens. Chad Owens is a local boy from Oahu and a former professional uh, Canadian football wide receiver. He attended Roosevelt High School, which was a competitive high school because I went to Farrington. And, but you know, it was good. In, in those days, we had a good competition with Farrington High, uh, with uh, Roosevelt High School. And uh, you know, anyway, he went to Roosevelt High School before graduating, uh, uh, graduating from the University of Hawaii. Owens played for the University of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors as a wide receiver, receiver from 2001 to 2004, where he still holds the, re- the record as Hawaii's all-time yardage leader. In 2010, Owens was signed as a receiver to the Toronto Argonauts and played six seasons with them, breaking ra- records for all season, all purpose y- yards, excuse me, and, uh, and the CFL Most Outstanding Player Award in 2012, as well as rated the best player in the league top 50 players. Chad is married to Renee Owens with two daughters and a son, Ciara, Lynn, Ariana, and Chad Jr. Now, his son, Jet, Chad Jr., is following his father's footsteps playing quarterback for high school uh, in, the, in class of 2022. Chad moved back uh, to Hawaii in 2019 and was the 2020 judge in the Miss Hawaii or what is a teen Miss Hawaii contest. He now spends his time hosting the new star advertiser Facebook live show called CO2 Run Back, giving Hawaii top sport headlines every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and is a host of his up- upcoming sport podcast call running it back i think it's already going so i'd like you guys to all welcome here i don't know it's it's a super guy i've had a chance to work with him in our stunt class but we're going to talk about that mr chad owens here we go guys <laughs> aloha everyone and uh, all yours. yeah aloha Al. thank you so much for having me today um man quite the intro i appreciate that and those uh I've done a lot so far in my life, and I'm looking forward to doing so much more. But uh, yeah, sports has provided me, a, you know, an awesome, not just platform, but uh, foundation uh, to everything that that I'm looking forward to doing. You know, in in the next chapter and the next phase of my life. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I went from being you talked about just that kid at Roosevelt High School. You know, a public school, uh, we didn't get too much notoriety. Um, and I just I just wanted to play sports. I played sports my entire life and I did everything. Football, basketball, baseball, soccer, <clears throat> anything, excuse me, anything that was competitive. You know, and, and any chance that I could go out and, and prove myself and prove that I could do this, I, I was all over it. You know, being an undersized kid growing up, uh, told that I was too small, so like that sort of chip on my shoulder stuck with me, and I, the, the the want to prove that was something that stuck with me all the way until like yeah, I walked on. I got a chance to walk on to to the University of Hawaii C four L. Like I didn't get a scholarship out of high school. I had to walk on. I had to basically try out and again prove that I could play with the big boys, quote unquote. And end up, you know, making it, earning my scholarship, becoming an All-American, uh, and then, and then the lifelong dream of becoming a professional athlete came true in 2005 when I got drafted to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the sixth round. And 
you know, it was a huge accomplishment, but, you know, um, in life, there's a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, you know, adversity. Uh, you know, I, I say that adversity is one of two things that's guaranteed in, in, in life, you know, adversity and, and that, that day you, you move on, you know? So I, um, I just, you know, my, my NFL career wasn't what I envisioned, but you know, looking back on it, I wasn't meant to be an NFL player. I, I was meant to be a CFL player. I was meant to go and do great things there and to build a network and to, you know, get the friends that I have now throughout that career. Yeah, I broke records there. I, um, some say, matter of fact, uh, the general manager right now of the Toronto Argonauts, who's a good buddy of mine, called me and was like, hey, Chad, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put you in. We're gonna nominate you for the CFL Hall of Fame. And so, you know, th that's, a, that's pretty cool, you know? Um, and, and so now that I've, I'm done after a 14 year pro career, like you said, having moved back to Hawaii, um, you know, that, that sports, all the things that I've done is, has like, I talk, like I talked about giving me a foundation to what I am trying to do now. And yeah, I'm a sports host for the, you know, and it's the, the CO2 Rundown is the Honolulu Star Advertiser show that, that I do, you know, uh, three days a week. Uh, the Running It Back podcast has launched. It's uh, every day there's different times on TV. It's uh, channel 50. And, and 1050 for your for your HD channels <clears throat> and aspiring actor and now you know uh, stunt everything to do in that world um, you know I think sports my sports background the, the the hard work the dedication the trying to prove myself is, is sort of driving me to this day and yeah I'm just looking forward to this next rollout and um yeah so i mean i appreciate you so much for having me on the show and i'm just i'm excited well we got a lot of questions to ask you um you know i was taking a look at your bio and i was on um one of the uh informations about you and they said that i think it was a misquote i know it's a misquote because you're not five one right <laughs> they had you as five five uh, five feet one inches tall <laughs> So, uh, what yeah, no, it? that was off. <laughs> no, what, what is your exact height? I'm five eight, like right. listed five eight, hundred eighty pounds. Like that's 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 been I've been there since like high school. So I, I'm still waiting for my growth spurt. So you feel like I still feel as if I got that that little burst <laughs> in me, you know? So yeah. I'm waiting. <laughs> well, this, that 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 burst of energy, uh, you know, uh, I I think was made up for your height so you know you did a lot good anyway here's let me ask you some questions here you know um and this has because of kicking and punching you know i want to we're going to be coming back to your professional uh, athletic uh sports but how and why you started uh, martial arts well i've always been intrigued in martial arts i'm just going to go back to when i was a kid um you know i had two dreams growing up it was to be a professional athlete Right, and the other dream was to be that 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 hero in a movie. Hence, that martial arts. Like I was a huge, you know, Van Dam, you know, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, kung fu movie. I used to watch all the Karate Kid. I used to watch all those martial arts movies, and I, I just I was very intrigued by it. And I loved martial arts. I loved combat. I loved the the fight scenes, and so. I got into martial arts at a young age and uh, when I was in grade six, I took up uh, shoot fighting. Uh, I used to live in uh, Pa'oa and shoot fighting, the instructor was uh, Scott Suzuki. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I've always had a thing for martial arts. Uh, hence, I, after my 2012 uh, MVP season in the CFL, in 2013, I actually fought in an MMA bout. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I love it. My dad used to always, you know, teach me how to punch and hit the bag. So I got a really good striking background. I understand it. Um, it it's I don't know what it is about martial arts that that sort of got me. I think it's just another opportunity uh, in in the competitive world. You know, I'm so competitive, and I just yeah. No, I think it, I think it, it's exciting. 
Okay, when was your breakout moment? <clears throat> Man, my breakout moment um, was in 2000 and as a professional athlete. Well, I have I have a few. I have a few. C4. I have a few breakout moments. I'm going to I'm going to go back to um, college. In in 2000 one, so I, I walked on again to the University of Hawaii. So 2000, I graduated from high school, walked on that fall, and I didn't play. I redshirted. So I got to learn a little bit, right? And then the next year, it was everyone Everyone talks about in 2001, the BYU game. That's the most memorable game of my college career, I think, where everyone talks about. But for me, it was... It was the the very first play that I got in. Not everyone knows this, but the very first play we were playing against our rival Fresno State at home. Some people some people may remember this, mm -hmm. and we were struggling. And you know, uh, our return game was struggling. And you know, here I am, still a walk on. You know, we we dress every game. I'm suited. You know, never never thought I'd be playing, but. Halftime comes in and the special team coach comes storming into the locker room and he just walks right up to me. He's like, CEO, you're returning the second half kickoff. And it walks off. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, whoa. Like all my other buddies, a couple other walk-ons like, CEO, this is your chance, man. Let's go. So I was like hyped up and I was like nervous. I was anxious, all of the above. And then, you know, but I, I thought about it. I said, man, this is your chance. This is your shot. And so that that opening kickoff of the second half, I took it about 70. And I almost took it to the house. But the, the, they had a safety that just, just angled me out. And that was my very first, very first touch in college football. And I think it was that play that sparked confidence in myself. It, it, it gave UH a, a burst of like, okay, damn, we, this guy can really return, return to football. And then, you know, I got another play. I made another play. And it just, th so that moment was a breakout moment for me that I don't, I don't think a lot of people know. I haven't really talked about it publicly, but that is the moment for me, which just gave me momentum to the rent that ending of that year against BYU. I was confident. I was leading the country. Uh, I became a freshman All-American returner that year, especially after that nationally televised game where I broke, uh, you know, a record in return yards in a game. But... And where we just <laughs> demolished BYU 72 to 45. <laughs> so that was a very exciting moment for me, which is a breakout moment. Yeah, yeah, I saw that uh, the game, and I saw one one game with, which was really incredible. There were so much people around you, and somewhere the short guy, which was you, went way above and caught the ball. And I said, "Did you see that?" I said, "Where did he come from, man? You took it, man!" I tell, I was like, "Wow." And I just said, you know, this guy, I'm going to be watching, watching, man. I, and, you you know, the things that you provided to the University of Hawaii for four years was incredible. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I know I know that we really had a good team at that, at that time. Um, you know, who inspired you um, during that time? Your biggest inspiration? Um, you know what? I um, During college, I, you know, I was a young, a young father. Uh, you know, I had, uh, my, you know, girlfriend at the time, long time girlfriend, who's not my wife and just, you know, my family is, is, is pretty solid. I had a lot of, you know, um, support from my family. Um, but as far as inspiration, man, it, it's, it's, you know, when I was a kid, it, it was, it, it, it was my mom, right? Cause you know, a single parent, uh, just watching her work every single day that's kind of that's been my inspiration oh look at that shot <laughs> that's me and my family and uh in toronto with the argos um yeah man brings back memories but yeah i mean you know and in life you know inspiration changes you know different things inspire you different people inspire you along your journey and you know early on like i said it was my mom you know and then like and then when i got to college it it became sort of you know, my girlfriend, my family, my kid, my son, you know, when I had him uh, as a as a junior. And that just sort of became the new why, right? You're a father, you you have a you have a family man, you're a, you have a family now, it's not about you as much as it is about 
someone you need to like take care of and be an example for. So that became my inspiration. That became my biggest why. But all along the way, though, Sifu, like I, I kind of, and I tell people this, that you have to kind of be selfish to be successful. Not in a bad way, but I, I was my own inspiration in a way. I wanted to prove to myself that mm -hmm. I can do it. You know, so it, it, in a way, you have to have that alongside with those other things I talked about. You have to have that selfishness to be successful. In every great athlete, every elite athlete, they'll tell you the same thing because in order to get there, you got to make certain sacrifices. You have to do certain things that others just aren't willing to do. And Absolutely. the want to, yeah, your want to has to over override or trump any anything else. Well, yeah, that's true, you know, because, uh, you know, you look in your mirror, you look in the mirror at least twice a day, at the beginning of the day, when you look at yourself and say, well, am I going to do it today? Be successful. And at the end of the night, you know, you're going to say, I did it. You know, I did it. Okay. So you're setting up things there. So, you know, what's your worst fear? Man. And, and talk about fears. That's crazy. See, if we're like, I think, I think now I, I have a, better ability to handle fear, adversity, all of those things. You know, the, the, I used to be afraid to fail. I used to be afraid to make a mistake. And that's ultimately, I'm going to tell this is where I also, this is something else I never shared a lot with. I mean, I didn't share this with a lot of people. I felt like I, when I was in my early in my pro career, while well, while I was in Jacksonville, I felt like I was carrying the entire state of Hawaii on my shoulders, on my back. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if I messed up or if I didn't do well, I was letting them down. And I would worry about how they would view me, how everyone would view me as a player if I didn't do as good as I did in college. I had all of these things that was literally on my mind, which ultimately led to my failure, <laughs> led to my myself being cut from the NFL and ultimately out of the NFL. But, you know, when you think about it, the, the difference between the NFL and, and college, it really isn't that much difference. I mean, the talent level, yeah. You know, it's, it's a step above. It's the, it's the cream of the crop. A lot of veterans, a lot of guys that are, you know, this is their livelihood and they, they, they're, they have more experience. So, so, of course, with experience comes comfort. And so as a rookie, I was dealing with a lot of outside fears that ultimately messed me up. But I'm thankful that I was able to go through that because I learned from that experience, which ultimately allowed me to be a better pro. And when I got to the CFL, I was primed. I was experienced. I was ready. I had failed. I had come back. I had an injury. I tore my ACL in the Arena League in 2008, came back from that. So I had all of these adversities, which led me to my, I'm fast forwarding now, my brand CO2, one of my characteristic traits or my taglines is adversity fuels me. So instead of running from adversity, being fearful of it, like I welcome adversity now, I want the next challenge. I want something to knock me down so I can get back up and be taller, things like that. So, you know, it just, it just primed me for that next trial. And, and I just, I kept the ability to overcome is something that's, learned and it's something that 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 you you can only get it by experiencing it awesome so you see that fear and uh, fear and success is go hand in hand because they like you know it's a stepping stone you know failure fear and failure has helped you propelled and uh, if people look at that and take this inspiration from you you know the adversities that you went through i mean you know you can learn a lot from it, you know, because um, uh, people of your status, athletic, uh, you know, that have that athletic ability, especially not being as big as those guys in the, uh, you know, playing football and coming from where you where you come from, you know, um, that's a really great accomplishment, and it's been really good for Hawaii to see Chad Owens. You know, that's great. You know, um, yep, it's all about inspiring the youth, man, inspiring the next generation to to believe that they can. And we've had so much more talent and so much more success uh, from athletes, 
even after me, it's even bigger than ever. So Hawaii right. sports, man, Hawaii athletes are are on the map and on the radar of a lot of colleges uh, now more than ever. Yeah, I know it's different from how it was 30 years ago. Um, any near any near death experience during your professional life? Oh wow, what a question! Um, um, during my professional life, you know what? No, no. I mean, you know, I'm such I, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a guy that enjoys the rush. See, well, if you haven't noticed. So nice. while I was in, um, man, I can't remember if it was college. It was probably during college. You know, I, I bodyboarded a lot. I, my, my friends bodyboarded when they were younger, and I, you know, that was my crew. So we'd go to Sandy Beach a lot. So I've been bodyboarding since I was, you know, in eighth grade. And it was either during high school or college. It was a day that was big out there. And shoot, I legit thought I was going to drown. I, 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 I almost drowned. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's in moments of life or death. Like when you, when you're thinking about that, you, you realize how precious life is. And again, you know, I talked about the fear. I talked about failure and having to experience it and having to have gone through it. You know, it really sucks that, that we actually have to like experience something to gain the perspective to, 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 to know, Oh, Okay, I see now. You know, it's like the saying of like, you don't appreciate something as much until it's gone. You know, things like that, it, it, it's, it sucks that we have to go through it in order to really feel it. But, you know, there's no better um, experience. There's no better educator than, than experience and, and having gone through something. So, uh, yeah, that was probably the closest I've come. And uh, I, I, I'm praying that I, I don't have any other encounters uh, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I know a lot of professional athletes, you know, that um, have other things other than just playing sports. The question I have is that do you play any musical instruments or sing at karaoke bars? Look, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty damn good at a lot of things, C4L. Like, I'm not trying to sound egotistical. I've just prided myself on trying everything and 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 making adjustments and like being pretty damn good at it uh, but damn it playing an instrument and singing i just that's the one thing i couldn't really get man so <laughs> so i'm i'm trying to to see if i can somehow work on those crafts to to you know round out my skill level uh because in acting you know and in sports, life, the more you can do, the more valuable you are. And so, you know, I, I, I don't think my singing is terrible. I just wish that it was like, like I could make an album, you know, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not at that level. Maybe I am, maybe in today's world with the technology, I could, someone can make me sound pretty damn good. But, um, you know, yeah, that's not my forte. Uh, but hey, I'm not afraid to try it. <laughs> well, the reason why I ask is because, you know, music, you have a lot of timing, you know, and, and, and your timing is extremely good. So I thought that, well, you know, this guy's got really good timing, you know, so he knows what a beat is. He knows when to cut and all, do, does all that. So I figured, well, you know, if you don't know it then or now, you know, you probably will later on because music is going to slip right into it because you have beats, half beats, full beats and everything. And you know that when you run, you take a half beat and you, you switch. Yeah. And, you know, so there's so there's music into the into the um, into your game, you know, so that that was really interesting. What's your greatest joy? My greatest joy. Man, there's 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 so many. Uh, there's so many, you know, I've. The the, the 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 cliche and the uh, the obvious answer would be being with my family, but that's that's a given, right? That is a that is a given. That's so I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this in a different way. Um, you know, my, my biggest joy is is when I get to really just um, escape. Um, when I say escape, is like to do when I do something that I I'm, my mind is not thinking about anything else. Um, so, you know, I, I go back to bodyboarding. Now that I'm done playing pro ball, 
I, I got back into bodyboarding and I really, really, really do just enjoy the ocean. I enjoy being out there because when I'm out there, it's just like, it's like an escape. It's like I'm in my own world. Um, you know, the ocean is healing and it's something that I, I've really grown a even more bigger appreciation for the sport um, and for the feeling that that you get you know this is my first time ever this season this winter season surfing up at the north shore and i never thought of that I'm like back when i used to bodyboard sandies and i'm like right north shore no way waves are too big there's no way and man i went out i went on a surf pipeline eight eight ten plus waves like it's huge and like i'm literally there's times like man what am i doing out here <laughs> but but I, I i got comfortable with it and you know it's such a surreal opportunity to be sitting in the front row and watching these pros do their thing uh and to and to you know to, to get into that lineup i'm hanging out with with the greatest of all time you know jeff hubbard uh you know he's the best bodyboarder in the world um and it's just like it's so different. It's such a new uh, realm for me that that that's a joy of mine. Uh, so you know, I've got a lot of joys, Sifu. A lot of things that I I, I love doing. Um, a lot of passions, a lot of new passions. But anytime I get a chance to sort of escape, I really enjoy that. Uh, when I drive, I, I don't. When I'm this is when I'm by myself. I don't listen to the music. I don't listen to the radio. There's nothing playing. I just I like to drive in silence and it's kind of peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of, that's also another joy of mine. I enjoy those moments where I get to just kind of like decompress and just, you know, relax. Do you think you're going to take that into another level, maybe go competitive? Bodyboarding? You know what? It's funny you say that because uh, Jeff Hubbard actually has a contest on because he's from Kauai. He has a contest, I believe, in July coming up in Kauai. I'm going to enter. <laughs> really? Is there any kind yeah. of prize? The the prize is is me entering like that. I don't I don't care about well I do care about winning. I'm, I'm competitive, uh, and you know I'm going to put my best fin forward. Uh, you know, and um, I just yeah. I mean, I definitely want to compete. You know, I. And that's the reason why I competed in the MMA bout. Like I just, when I put my time and effort into something and I feel like I got, I get good at it. I, I want to put it to the test and I'm not trying to put myself to the test, in, you know, bodyboarding, but it's just, man, we've got one life to live and I'm literally just, I'm doing the most, you know, I, I for a number of years, I, I just focused on one thing and that was being the best football player that I could possibly be. Since you know, I was in, in grade eight, right? So grade seven when I started playing. Like I, in sports, I'm just trying to be the best that I could be. And it became football. And now, you know, I, I can I can do other things. And I just, yeah, I'm very competitive. So I'm going to have fun with that. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm just continuing to write the book. See, for I'm just continuing to write the book. Absolutely, yeah. This is just another chapter in your life. You know, a lot of people from that seeing this you know around the world they don't know exactly what bodyboard is what do you, what, what is it oh yeah so bodyboarding so so it's it's a it's also known as a boogie board um oh, i thought i had my board in here so you have a surfboard people stand up right a boogie board you're you're laying on it you have a set of fins on your feet and you're laying on the board right holding like this and you're laying on the board so uh if you don't know what it is like go ahead and google like google jeff hubbard bodyboarding and you will see what that is that that he is the best in the world and uh yeah right now i, th I think jeff is 40 i want to say 40 he's early 40s 42 43 maybe 40 yeah and he's still the best in the world and the things he's able to do on that board is unbelievable so i ride his boards like he has a brand hub boards him and his brother so uh, i rep all their stuff i love their equipment and um yeah so bodyboarding is is fun mm. you can do a lot of tricks on it also you know yeah yeah 360s air air rollers, arse flips <clears throat> reverse 
you know, uh, uh, invert, um, reverse errors. Like there's, I'm starting to learn all the tricks too. I can't, I don't do a lot of tricks. I'm more of what you call a prone rider. A prone rider is someone that just drops down, pulls in, gets barreled. You know, that's kind of my thing, but I'm going to enter a competition. I need to start adding some tricks to my arsenal. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a guy that, that loves speed. See, uh, you know that I love speed. So with speed, when you get a lot of speed, you can, so you can hit the lip, right? So this is the wave you can get here. You can hit the lip and get launched out. So that's called like an invert. We just kept some major air. Uh, that's something that I'm, that I'm, I've been working on. So that's your greatest challenge right now. Um, I don't want to say that, that bodyboarding is my greatest challenge right now. I think, I think, uh, just my greatest challenge is, is being better every day than I was, than I was the day before. You know, it, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. The challenge of the day is to be better than yesterday. You know, so, um, that's, that's the challenge. I have a, I have daily challenges, right? Let's be better today than I was yesterday. Um, in business, in entrepreneurship, in bodyboarding, if you want to add that in there, you know, parenting, fatherhood, um, you know, husband, friend, uh, it doesn't matter. Like anything, like I'm, I'm, I'm competing with myself on all levels in, in all phases. So yeah. Well, that's the only person you're going to be answering to, you know, when you look in the mirror and, and go to bed anyway. Um, you know, there's the other thing I, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, I know that you have a lot of things that inspired you, you know, um, to be who you are. And the, um, about a week or two weeks ago, we did uh, the stunt and, you know, your, your, your body was really cut. So, you know, the question I have is being, being cut. What is your, 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 your regiment like in workout? And, you know, because, you know, you being athletic, you probably have your choice of food that you like to eat, you know, to, to be that way. So what do you do? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, fitness, my fitness journey has changed over the course of years, right? You know, when you're an athlete, it's about performance. Um, and, and what I learned, I wasn't doing this, you know, early on in high school, I'd eat whatever, man, I was a big fast food guy in high school, <laughs> Jack in a box, like college, fast food, like plate lunches, like I, cause I could eat it and not put on because I was so active, but as time went on, as I learned more about the body, after going through my injury in 2008, when I tore my ACL, that's when I really started to dive in to the anatomy of the human body. Um, I started to really pay attention. I started to change my diet. I started to really monitor my consumption of foods. And the biggest thing, the biggest thing is that, that if I can give an advice to people out there is is to cut out your, 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 as much sugar as you can. And a lot of people drink soda. I, I don't drink soda. I don't drink juice. I only drink water. And in the morning I have, I have, you know, a, a cup of coffee, but I only drink water. I'll have maybe, you know, I have like my BCAAs and stuff, but that's like your branch, you know, chain amino acids. That's got some flavor and you mix up with water, obviously, but I, I don't, I don't drink soda. Like I literally legit only drink water. And water is like, to me, that's the number one thing you can do for yourself if you're trying to, you know, get in shape. So that's number one. And, you know, what you eat, there's so many diets out there, so many diets, but everybody's different. Everybody, everyone's bodies reacts differently to, to different foods. So you need to sort of like dabble in a few different things to find what works for you. But, you know, if, if it's something that I'd, I'd say that can work for everyone, it's like, hey, <laughs> decrease your sugar. If you can totally eliminate the, the, the refined sugars, like all like the, you know, sodas, candies, junk food, eliminate that. There's, there's, you know, sometimes, hey, with some carbs, you know, like rice and breads, like, yeah, the, that those things turn into sugar, but you need carbs. That's your energy. You know, uh, but limit those though. You can limit that. You can, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be more plant-based now. I still have proteins, but I'm not really like a huge, oh, I gotta have meat. You know, that's one thing that I really sort of, uh, learned more about being more plant-based. 
Um, I've done I, I I've done the intermittent fasting a lot. Um, you know, twelve um, eighteen uh, sorry sixteen hour sixteen off eight on. Yeah. So I eat in an eight hour window and then the next 16 hours I'm fasting. So like from 12 to eight, that's my eating window. I've done that. I, I found success with that. Um, but I just, you know, at the end of the day, C4, I've always loved working out. Uh, I, 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 I like looking good. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. I like looking good. And now I can, I can work out. I can lift to look good. Whereas as a football player and as an athlete, it doesn't matter what you look like. If you're performing, and you're showing up on game day and you're making plays and you're that's what matters so the training regimen sort of changed uh, but yeah I, I like looking good and in, and, and in acting man if you look good like you know you give yourself a chance right you can look the part uh, and it just it just looks better on camera right you're 39 years old now right or 40 39 I just turned 39 on April 3rd so you know hey this is the last year of the 30s but you know what I'm, I'm actually looking forward to to my 40s like i i posted a picture um yesterday it was a it was a picture of me in high school in my in my football uniform after a game and we're the roosevelt rough riders and you know yesterday with the news of dmx passing like because he had i think he had went into the hospital i think he he overdosed on opioids man man rest in peace to dmx you know he had that song rough riders right um So that became our, like our, our anthem song. So I posted a picture and someone commented, it's like, man, why, why, why did you, why did you look older in high school than you do now? <laughs> and, you know, people are like, you know, I get that a lot. It's like, man, like you, you don't age. And I just, that, that comes from just caring about yourself, man. Self-care is, is, is huge. You know, you got to put yourself first always. You, that's why I talked about that selfishness. It's not, you know, being selfish uh, to be successful isn't necessarily a bad thing. You don't have to, you know, be a selfish person. But when it comes to you and your what you want, your goals, you have to be selfish, meaning you're going to have to do what you have to do to achieve what you're setting out to achieve. And if it's youthfulness, you got to make the necessary sacrifices. If it's to look good, you got to make the necessary sacrifices to be an entrepreneur, to be successful. In business, you got to make the set the necessary sacrifices, and so that's kind of, you know, a long answer, see for the for the fitness side of things. But it's all it's all full circle, right? And and, and you can't just you don't want to be someone that picks and chooses where they want to be successful at. I think if you have a um, like like if someone was to describe you, right? You want them to describe you in a way that it speaks to what you do in everything you do, not just in one thing, not just as a, in your job. Or, so you got to take your approach to everything you do in life. And to me, that's, that's when you're really going to succeed. Being the tip of the, being the tip of the spear, um, you know, being that, you know, everything behind you is, is just going to come along, you know, and I see that, you know, taking the leadership role and, you know, there's no harm, as you said, in being, being, actually loving yourself you know but there's there's um you have control over that you know you, you don't let the ego get 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 into the way because you know ego is also you know stop people from you know really learning and you have oh, it yeah. you, you've taken every opportunity no matter what it is you know taking it from the point like well you know i'm an empty cup i'm going to learn it and you know this is what inspires me also when i see people like you that already have the kind of skill They really don't need that much more to learn. But then you, you put aside your humbleness and say, okay, you know, like when we uh, worked with the uh, the stunt, you know, you were able and willing to do whatever I said to do, and you did it. And this is why I look and say, you know, in that area, it's going to be real easy for you. It's going to come easy because you already got the skills. And the thing is just that the greatest thing that you have is the first six inches of your life. And that is the six inches between the temple to temple. You got the brain, you know? And if you got that kind of mindset, that six inches in between, you got it. Because it doesn't matter. You're just using it. A lot of people say, man, I want to be like that person. Well, no, 
you can use that as inspiration. All you have to do is be yourself and you are yourself. There's no other person but Chad Owens, Chad Owens. That's it. You see, so, you know, you, you, what you've done is very inspirational. I mean, even to guys like me that's been around a while and we see somebody coming up, we look at it and say, we say to ourselves, we say, wow, that's incredible. You know, and we also go like to go back into thinking, yeah, you know, I'd like to be like him. But the idea is that I am, I'm going to be, but I'm going to be me in my version of Chad Owens. You know, yeah. so you know, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's really good. Um, what kind of words of wisdom would you give to our audience? Man, just to kind of piggyback of what you're saying, you know, see for Al, like, and, and, and before I answer that question, you know, I talk about selfishness, I talk about pursuing greatness and success and all those things. But one of my passions, I do enjoy giving back. I do enjoy, you know, taking time and, and, and sharing my knowledge with other people, with young people. I'm also a motivational speaker. So I love being able to go and speak to high schools, businesses, just people in general, uh, because there's, you know, sports provides, like I said, a platform of experiences and, and the parallels of sports experiences and life experiences are probably the best, the best things you can find. If you can link yourself to an athlete and what they've had to go through, you can definitely find something within their journey, within their story that resonates with you and your life and your story and allow that to help you, you know, moving forward, overcoming something. Um, it's the parallels are so unbelievable. So I do enjoy, um, giving back in that regard and, and, and inspiration, you know, that's exhale CO2, my brand, Chad Owens, number two, CO2 is what we exhale, right? Carbon dioxide, but CO2 for me is me. And so my tagline is exhale inspiration. I've essentially inhaled all of my, uh, all of my experiences, the wins, the losses, all of those things. And now I'm able to exhale that through my breath, through my actions, through my posts, through whatever it is I'm doing in hopes to inspire people to be, to become a better version of themselves, which leads me to that right there. It's youthful. It's like, you don't want to, don't compare yourself. This is my, this is me answering the question. People don't, don't compare yourself to, to someone else because you can't, you cannot be someone else. You were made the way you were made because you are a special person. You are the only person like you. So stop comparing yourself. When you look at someone else, if you see success, that's, that's, one, that's one thing, man. Social media can be a blessing or a curse for people. If you're looking at someone and, and, you, and you want what they have, then okay, that's a goal. If it's, if it's, if it's the lifestyle that you see that, that you want, then that's a goal. I want this type of lifestyle, but then you have to go and look and do some research. Okay, what did that person do to achieve that lifestyle, right? What are some of the things that they had to go through? People don't just wake up one day and become successful, right? So if you want something, you first need to understand that you are capable of achieving anything you want in this life. Because there's C4L, there's no difference between me and you and everyone that's, that's watching this right now. There's no difference between any of us as far as ability, you know, we've all, we, we all have the ability to choose what music we listen to, to choose to listen to a podcast, to learn, to, to self evolve, to choose to take what we learn, right? This is the key. We learn stuff, um, you know, car, um, what do you call it? Compartmentalize, mm -hmm. go through it, we process it. And then what do we do after that? Well, we've, we've ingested a lot of things throughout our life, but, but are we actually taking the knowledge and, and applying it or, or is it just knowledge that's being stored and not used? Knowledge is power, but, but, but it's nothing if it's not being used. So Absolutely. take the knowledge, you got to take the learn, you got to take the experiences and you got to apply them to your life. But then just like, just like a new offensive coordinator on a football team, he puts his, his touch on it. He's learned this offense from this coach, but he has his own ideas. He has his own views on how he thinks this can work. 
So he puts his little his little touch on it. So put the Sifu Al touch on something, right? Put your put Joe's touch on something. Put put Kathy's touch on something. Make it your own, and you own it, right? You got to own yourself. You got to be proud of yourself. You got to be, you know,、um, you got to be happy with who you are. At the end of the day, be happy with who you are, and then and then that will lead to you being motivated to go out and and, and do the things that you want to do the way you want to do them. Right. How are you dealing with the pandem-、uh, this pandemic pandemic that we have? Man, you know what? Initially, it's like, man, this sucks. Like、mm-hmm. I hate it,、mm-hmm. and I think that's probably the the, the human. Thing to do, but man, I'm thankful. To be honest, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I'd still, me and my family would still be in Toronto right now.、Uh-huh. I'd still be living there.、Um, you know, it brought me home. It pushed me to evolve, to think, to create, to 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 step outside of the box, to to step outside of the comfort zone. Right? It like like a diamond, man. Diamonds are made from pressure. So, I've always. I, I, this is crazy because I was actually just thinking about this yesterday. I was like, man, like I, I, I need, I need more pressure. Like I, I want more pressure. And and the, the pandemic has been a lot of pressure, but it pushed me to, to to step outside. It pushed me to do new things. It pushed me to think differently. So, we, you, you got to want pressure. Adversity fuels me. Right, so you, you, we need the pressure. So, you know, the thing that that I'm, it's affected my my kids a lot. It's affected my sons, my son and his sports career, my daughters and their sport. It's affected them. And that's the thing to me that's that's hurting me is because it's affecting them. It's affected me positively, you know, because it's allowed me to grow. But it's it's tough on kids, man. We're asking kids to to be resilient as adults. That's the way adults can be, but it's just not possible. So it's harder on kids.、Um, so, so it, you know, it's it also created more work for parents to to support their kids even more, right? They're at home now. It just it's just so it's been so tough on them. But I've tried to explain what I've just explained to you. Um, you know that there was an, there's still an opportunity. Hey, if you wake up in the, if you wake up if you woke up today, guess what? You were given another opportunity, right?、Nice. To be better, to work. So you know we we can choose to to to, to sob and to why me and to sulk and to just sit home and be like, man, whatever. I'm just you know that's a choice, right? Or you can choose to be better. You can choose to work harder. You can choose to inspire more. Um, you know, every day it's a blessing to get up, and it's a new opportunity to to to, to get better. It's all it's all perspective. It's all how you look at it. Perspective and sensibility. Yeah, we've yeah.、Uh, we've had a lot of good times、uh, just listening to you and seeing you grow. You know,、um, and I really want to thank you for coming on to the show. And、uh, it's not ending here because we still between you and I, we still got a lot of work to do. You know, so we'll we'll, we'll hook up again、uh, after this. So, Chad, I want to really take the time right now to really、uh, thank you for being on and giving us your inspiration. And for those that you know have no knowledge on who you are, now they do, and it's been very inspirational. And I'm sure that we're going to be keeping up and watching you. You know, I'm enjoying it, and I'm sure everybody else is enjoying it. Chad, I want to thank you very much for being on the show with us and. For everyone, thank you for for joining us, and we hope to see you next week when we have、um, Sunny. Who do we have next week? Sifu Run. We have、uh, Sifu Run Lu. All right,、uh, so、fantastic. Pretty exciting. Right. So, okay. So. Hey, right on, Sifu Al. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it.、Uh, this is a blessing. This is、uh, you know, awesome to have me on. And hey, if you're listening, if you're watching this, and you want to follow my journey more, get more inspiration.、Uh, The the best way is to just check me out on Instagram, man. It's at Chad Owens and then the number two.、Um, I'm I'm always posting. I'm on my stories. I'm on you know. I check my messages. 
Uh, so just follow the journey, man. Follow me. Uh, share my stuff. Be inspired. And, and you know, next time I'm out there at Sifu Al doing more stunt training, we're going to be posting that up. Uh, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Right. So just appreciate the support. Hope you guys were inspired and continue to work, man. Continue to grind. All right. Thank you very much, people. We'll see you next next week. And enjoy the weekend. Aloha. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Aloha. Thank you for uh, Bye-bye. joining Bye-bye. in. Bye-bye. We'll see you around. Okay. Aloha. Hello. <laughs> Ciao.